Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movie That Pop. I'm the Colonel, I am a Class 5 free floating vapor, and let's see what popped up in theaters this week. All right, here we go. Now, we all know that remaking Ghostbusters was unnecessary. I'll even, I'll even say ill-advised, but the backlash against this movie before its release has been pretty crazy, not the least of which because it's included some kind of ugly sexist comments due to the four leads being women this time around. There have been a bunch of dudes hemming and hawing on the internet about this for months, and they all kind of sound like this guy. It is Anchor Man, not Anchor Lady, and that is a scientific fact. Uh huh. And in turn, I kind of felt like this guy. I don't know what we're yelling about! Take away all of the baggage, I said, and you've still got a high concept comedy created by and starring some of the funniest people in the business. So yeah, I was willing to give it a shot. And now, at last, after two terrible trailers and an awful music video, we have the movie itself. We can ignore everything else, like mature adults that we are, and judge this film on its merits alone. And now, I have to say, <clears throat> it has quite a few merits. So many, in fact, that I recommend this movie to any and all. It doesn't recycle the characters and story beats from the first one. It forges its own path, creates its own unique story, while paying homage to the original film. And really the only complaint I have, the only complaint, is that it pays so much homage. Like, seriously, there is a lot of homage going on. As a result of this movie hedging its bets and trying to give fan service to a fan base that has largely rejected the movie on principle, the movie sometimes has trouble getting out of its own way. But anytime it forges ahead as its own original film, this new Ghostbusters proves it has the goods and is a rollicking good time from the beginning to the very, very end of the credits. That was a very long capsule review. Sorry about that, I guess the review itself has some baggage. But now it's time to get in depth. 10 seconds. If you're wondering, it took this movie 10 seconds to make me laugh in an opening scene that recalls the opening scene in the original film, but with Jared from Silicon Valley literally soiling himself instead of a crusty old librarian. And the scene ends with the opening lines of the original Ray Parker Jr. theme song, one of maybe five versions of the song that you'll hear on the soundtrack before the films end, and I actually got goosebumps. Maybe this is a product of the art of diminished expectations, but I was constantly amazed at how much I enjoyed the film and loved following these characters on their own adventure. Amazed, I tell ya! I mean, you've heard of comedies that put all the best jokes in the trailer? Now look at the opposite effect. Everything in the trailers telegraphed a bland, lame ripoff, and the entire film we were presented with instead was, well, it was many things, but it was anything but uninspired. The best thing about the approach director and writer Paul Feig took with this material is not to simply cast a female Ray, a female Egon, and simply do a beat-by-beat -beat retread of the original. No, despite the fact that the only non-scientist in the crew is once again the black person, and that Kate McKinnon's hairdo is clearly Egon's hairdo from the Ghostbusters cartoon, the similarities all end there. They're all different and unique characters with new backstories and motivations, and they relate to each other differently than the original crew did. And the central mystery of the plot is fun to follow along with. The male bimbo secretary, played with doltish charm by Chris Hemsworth, has nothing in common with Janine. The mayor, played by Andy Garcia, doesn't have the same role in the story as the mayor of the first film. This movie is its own thing. And that thing, at face value, is a very fun, very funny movie with some great 3D ghost effects and some exciting action beats. Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy are both doing solid work here and do a lot of the heavy lifting, all so that Leslie Jones and Kate McKinnon can come in and steal the show. In fact, Kate McKinnon, let me... Let me just for a minute. Hello. Is it me you're looking for? Okay, okay. Kate McKinnon in this movie, you just cannot take your eyes off of her. Not only is she pretty much oozing geeky sex appeal, she just infuses this manic, goofy energy throughout the entire film that she really single-handedly makes this film a delight. Seriously, watching Kate McKinnon in this movie just made me happy. In a way, I don't even think I fully understand. Last night I went out and bought some Funko Pops and boy do I feel like I made the right choice by having this sweet baby right on my desk. Kate McKinnon as Holtzman is the very best thing about this very good film. Due to the chemistry between these characters, Ghostbusters really defied my expectations and made for one of the best surprises of the summer. I expected it to be middling to awful, and I walked out so energized, so thrilled, especially because I stayed through the end credits, which I do wholeheartedly suggest they are some of the most fun to watch end credits I can remember, especially in IMAX 3D, for a really fun stinger. 
The only thing that I can hold against this movie is the slavish need to insert cameos and references to the original movie. These scenes stop the movie dead in its tracks and are largely unfunny. Everything that is original in this movie works so well, I kind of wish these references had just been left out. It would have been ballsy for sure, but we can all agree that rebooting Ghostbusters was pretty ballsy to begin with. They should have thrown caution to the wind. There were great original ghosts, so we didn't need the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man or Slimer, especially because it gives ammunition to those disgruntled sexist geeks that are gonna say, oh, they gave Slimer a girlfriend? Lame, are they gonna make everything in this movie all girly and stuff? Ugh. I award Ghostbusters a large bag of popcorn. It's a big, fun comedy thrill ride. And if they make this into a series, hopefully the next film will be able to shake the specter of the original and just forge ahead without all the baggage because this cast and these characters can stand on their own and I want to see more of these Ghostbusters. We may never have picked up the phone to request it, but this Ghostbusters movie answers the call anyway. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. Please let me know what you thought of Ghostbusters in the comments below because I'm really curious to hear what you guys thought. Are you feeling this? Are you not? Did you even give it a shot? Let me know if you think I missed the mark, I can take it. Regardless, if you enjoyed the show, click the thumbs up icon and visit our channel by clicking the icon right down there and subscribe for more great videos each and every week. In the meantime, thanks for watching, I'm the Colonel, and that's a big Twiggy.